The government that forced this move to the villages, to the lines, had made no preparations uh, for this influx of new villagers. So um, the women that we're interviewing recall uh, arriving with small children in tow, some of them pregnant, having to make bricks to build their own homes. You can see one of the brick structures, handmade brick structures in the background there. Walking a very long distance to the nearest water source because they'd been moved away from the rivers as well. Long days of working in an inhospitable space. And Mama Ila, who's uh, pictured here on my left, um, she's talking in the, in the image. Mama Ila Mkawana um, remembers the particular trauma of losing a baby while doing all this work in the village and not being able to mark its grave. In the countryside, the family would have buried the child or buried any loved one under a tree. Here in the village, they had to bury the child in a graveyard um, and they had to pay to raise a grave marker and she had no money to do so. So still today, she remembers the trauma from 50 years ago of not being able to properly mark her child's grave and not knowing where the child is buried. A more general trauma came when their beloved uh, chief Gagesha um, was imprisoned. He resisted the removals from the countryside, arguing that the homeland government at least had to make preparations, bas basic arrangements in the village space, build a reservoir, prepare people, uh, prepare homes for people before they were uprooted from their farms. In response, the homeland government threw him in, in jail uh, and replaced him with his more compliant cousin. So these are the kind of compounding losses that happened when the community was uprooted from the countryside and moved into the village. Mm -hmm.